You got anything you'd like to ask Tom before we go, CJ? Yeah, man. I would just ask, like, when you started playing well, what was the process of um, your mentality? Like, how did you stay on a straight and narrow? Um, even, like, you know, you have people reaching out and uh, family and, like, the, just the world around you seems like it's spinning and you're just trying to stay focused and stay in a, on a straight and narrow. I think the important thing I really want you to realize, this is now your job. Everyone, when they come to the game, it's a vacation. It's fun for them. Oh, my God, we're here to watch, you know, CJ play. For you, you know, you don't bust in on your, on your friends at their job. And, you know, when they're trying to be really focused and do what they need to do. Hey, can I interrupt you? Hey, I know there's a really busy time for you, but let's go do something fun. Or, you know, you don't need to be the source of people's entertainment over the course of the season. This is, it's not college anymore. The earlier you get it in your mind that this is a profession and you're a professional and everyone is counting on you and you can't have a bad day like Coach Day taught you. And you're in an organization where D'Amico is a great coach, um, Nick Cesario, you know, I've got a long relationship with. You know, all these guys are counting on you. It's not, it's fun. The process of winning is fun. You know, the memories you're going to have from a great season are fun. The games are fun. The practice, the camaraderie is fun. You know, trying to create fun for everybody else outside of that isn't your responsibility. You're not camp counselor for everyone's fun activities. You're out there trying to perform, trying to dig deep for your teammates, and that requires intense focus for a long period of time. There's discipline that starts the beginning in August all the way through the end of the season. I think the important part about firing and hiring and, and, and all this is continuity is the key of the NFL and, and, and business. And, you know, whether it's NFL or NBA, the more you have continuity, the more you can build on things over the course of years. It's hard to cover, you know, if you look at football in particular, it's hard to cover the amount of situations that come up every week, you know, in a game, you know, start a game, end of quarters, how to use your timeouts, end of half times, critical third down situations, critical red area plays, situational football. All these things need to be built up, these reps in practice, talked about in meetings time and time and time again. It's, it's tr like trying to learn a language. You have English, you go on to learn English for one year. Okay. Great. And you want to, how will you be in your second year? Better. How will you be in your third year? Way better. In your fourth year, better. What if you, every year you had to switch language? You go English one year. Okay, now we're going to start back in, at French. Okay, now we're going to go to Chinese. Okay, now we're going to go to German. Okay, now we're going to go to Spanish. It's really hard to build up any of that consistency and continuity. So you can never really go deep on the playbook. You can never go deep on situations. So I was a beneficiary of a lot of coaching changes over the years because we were beating teams. They couldn't get over the hump. They were all trying to beat the team that I played for. And when they couldn't, they ended up firing the coach, which in the end helped us even more. So, you know, you think sometimes you're solving a problem by firing the coach. I don't know. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you can create more problems, too. So you really better know what you're doing if, if that's the case. We're all better players for having him as our coach. And I think there was a level of accountability and discipline that he had that maybe we didn't always want to hear it. But in the end, when we reflect back, we're happy that we did hear it and that we went through it. I think a lot of coaches are fearful of disciplining players these days because players have social media presence. And if they don't like it or hear their feelings, you know, they can lash back out. And then it becomes a popularity contest between the players and the coaches. But I'd say one thing that was great about Coach Belichick, he never had that fear. You know, he was going to tell you what he thought the truth was, even though we may have you know, all disagreed a little bit at times to what that truth really was. There was no fear in his mind of correcting. And I think when you grow up coaching a guy like Lawrence Taylor, you know, and we had LT on our program, like, you know, you realize that as a, as a coach, man, if you're going to get a, your, your point across, you better come across confident. You better come across prepared. And I think then you coach a Randy Moss, first ballot Hall of Famer. Then you coach Tom Brady and you coach some incredible players that he did. I, he, he had a way about him that he was there, and, and everyone saw his work ethic, too. So we all knew that it came from a place, a very educated place, too. Like, I respected his work ethic so much because I knew he was combing through every single bit of film every single week to try to put us in a, in a position to succeed. So when someone critiques you, okay, I'll, I'll embrace that. <laughs>